but I mean, I'll be. Yeah, it's because I have a tab. Okay. Uh Sorry, he was going to be right back. I'm gonna keep like tabbing out to go to other stuff. Okay, I think that's Abby in here. Abby, is that you in here? Maybe, maybe not. Is it someone other than Abby? Does my Twitch chat work? Let me also pull it up on my phone. Because I've never used it on XSplit, so I don't know if it works. I'm live. Okay, I have to chat up. One viewer. No one in the chat. It sounded like I said no one in the chat. Chad maybe could do it with some people in him. Um, I'm gonna wait another little bit just to make sure that people who want to get here in here are in here Because that's important um, So anyway, what's up with y'all? Um, oh My AC just kicked on so I'm gonna let that go while we're still in this beginning part And you guys let me know if it sucks to hear because my mic is like Can super pick up on stuff, but it is also hot so um, I'll probably turn it off um, once I actually start getting into the game. But for now, um, it, it stays on. Also, I just remembered that while I'm in BRI back mode, you can't hear me. I currently, I think I currently have that set too. Let me see if I can change that setting so you guys can still hear me. Um, I don't think I have that setting in here. I think I'd have to do X split and I'd have to like close this and reopen it and I don't want to do that. Um, okay, I got two people here watching. Are either one of you Abbies or are neither one of you Abbies? And also, can you hear the AC and is it distracting? Okay. Oh, hey, yeah, okay. It's Abby, Abby's here. Abby, can you hear the AC?
Okay, I'm gonna get I'm not getting a response, so I'm gonna assume that means no you can't. Um, but let me know if you can, let me know if it gets distracting. It's just I need my AC on, y'all. That's why my last video was like an hour. Um, not to say I know this one's gonna go longer, but it just got hot. I'm a baby. And now the AC's off, so you guys don't even have to worry about it anymore. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and start. Oh, um, let me recap. So the last time, so I'm still on part one of Snowbound Blood. Um, well, I mean, there's the prologue and then there's, I don't know, are they called chapters? Um, volumes. Okay. Well, the AC's off now, so hopefully you can't hear it because <laughs> that would be weird. Um... Yeah, computer lagging is a butt. Um, because I don't think this should... I don't know why the FPS is so low. This is just here. You know what? I'm going to close out of Chrome. And that'll probably help things on my end. Sorry, I keep forgetting I go into BR BRP mode when I do that. Um, so maybe things will get better or maybe they won't. Because for some reason, even though this is a really basic game to stream, it FPS is low. Anyway, I'm going to do my cool joke now. What up, guys? It, welcome to Trends Like These. I'm Travis, and I'm drinking Bumbly, which is locally made blueberry honey wine, and it's sparkling. Really, I just want to talk about this because it's neat. And um, Trends Like These, that's a joke. I don't know if any of you listen to Trends Like These, but it's good. You should! Um... Anyway, so last time I played part of uh, the first hour, well, not the first hour of volume one, because I played prologue first, then I played volume one, and I did the truck scene, and people are dead, and we check them out, and you remember, like, vaguely seeing one person one time, and then being sad because your love life is sad, because uh, the, from the little bit I know of Fast Air, it's sad. It's very sad. So, <laughs> anyway, so that's what we were doing, and then we got uh ushered into a side room in the office building by a jade blood so and also i kept accidentally right clicking because my middle finger likes to twitch sometimes but let's go i don't remember any of the voices i did for anyone except for the narrator and cecily because they were both just my voice it's very dark in here there's been there's barely any light to see by, apart from the faint glow from your overhead visor and the occasional flash from of lighting outside. You'd consider typing to find... You'd consider typing? What? I'm turning into Justin now. I can't talk. You'd consider trying to find a light switch, but then perhaps that would ruin the effect. Oh no, she hot. The tall, shadowy figure that was in the room when you entered steps into a shaft of light and you can make her out clearly for the first time. Recall, uh, ham -ify? Ham i fi like Wi-Fi, but ham. Uh, Hecrix. Uh, Hamifi? I have no idea how to say this name. I really want to go with Hamify, but that sounds silly, and I don't think she's a silly person. Um, Hamifi Hecrix may be more of a no-nonsense corporate cutthroat than her, uh, knitwear-loving mate spirit. Oh! But she has the same underlying instinct for dramatic flair bordering on comical. Oh, the little baby is dating her? Hmm. They were almost made for each other. You have to remind yourself that this is, in fact, very literally true. Man, what the fuck is going on in Fast Air? But between her skulking in the shadows and him looking forlornly out of windows every few moments, it's a wonder these kids get any work done. Now, the effective second-in-command of the corporate machine is standing in front of you with an ex expectant look on her face. She's holding her signature clipboard, the weapon of choice for a ruthless uh, itin it itinerarian? Itinerarian. Itinerarian. There we go. Get right to it. She doesn't bother saying anything. She just clicks the end of her pen once, somehow managing to make it sound like a question. 
You both know she's here for your report on the burglary, so you get right to it. Your eyes drift shut as you begin to recount the afternoon's findings. Something about the darkness makes it easier, like you're giving the information uh, an emptiness to fill, to fill up. Your mouth moves of its own accord, recalling everything in discrete, itemized chunks. All the while, the faint scratching of a pen on paper accompanies your low murmur. It's an odd kind of music the two of you make together sometimes. A routine that's, fam a routine that's familiar despite the business atmosphere. Eventually, it dies down. Your story comes to an end, and you open your eyes again. Hamifi has stopped writing. She's looking down at her clipboard, deep in thought, brows slightly furrowed. After a few moments of silence, though, she looks at you again and speaks for the first time. In- Oh god, what voice to get right? I was just about to use my regular voice. In your opinion, what sort of people are we dealing with here? Her voice is proper, professional, poised. Tell me that first, so I can use the right voice. I'm not sure. There are several reasonable possibilities with varying degrees of mutual exclusive, mutual exclusivity. Exclusive. I can't talk tonight. Why am I doing this? Why did I decide to drink while doing something that is entirely talking? Uh, with varying degrees of mutual exclusivity. The only certain, the only certainty is that whoever they are, they have some kind of connection with corporate. The amount of information they must have had access to speaks to that. I can't say if it's anything as serious as a mound mammal with the, within the organization or just a matter of bad book. Her eyes narrow at that suggestion. But either way, there's clearly some avenue through which these people were able to exploit internal information for their own ends. The heist was far too clean, too perfect. It was almost impressive. Hamifi is frowning openly now and cuts your hypothesizing short with an upraised hand. This robbery was far from a watertight operation, Miss Eofora, and you of all people should understand why. There was only one key detail which demonstrates it. Oh, there was one key detail which demonstrates it. The bodies at the scene, the murder of our employees, that was mess. That was uncalled for. An unforgivable waste of troll resources. The theft itself was so perfect that the deaths were clearly unnecessary. Anyone with that complete a picture of the situation should have managed to avoid bloodshed altogether. You made it sound as though you almost respected these people, but this isn't a game that you're playing. No comment. These criminals aren't an opponent to be challenged. They're a scourge to be cleansed. They're blood on the snow, just like that mess they left behind. That's three more empty jobs I have to fill somehow. That's more temp work that needs to be done. That's, some, that's something else sucking us dry while we try to fix this entire planet. Another, another vital asset plucked from our grasp as we, as I, work tirelessly endlessly against the clock. Time is not on our side. This crime is a mockery pointed straight at corporate itself. Though her, voice has, though, her, though her voice has barely changed in volume this whole time, to you it sounds like uh, Hamifi has begun shouting at this point. Her words are ice cold and dripping with anger. Snowbound blood. Haha, <laughs> they said the thing. They said the title. Get it? Look, it's the title. You don't know how to respond to this, and so you elect not to say anything altogether. Years of experience tell you that, in situations like these, the best move is to not make one. You're in Zug's Wang. Hamifi breathes in and out pointedly for a few moments, before seeming to collect herself once more as her face inches imperceptibly back to an expression of complete calm. Sestro may take a more lax approach to deploying corporate assets, but I'm never one to let a good thing go to waste. Just remember, Miss Yorpa, you are as much an investment as any of our other initiatives, and safeguarding investments is where I come in. This investigation may run darker and more foul than you realize. Don't trust anyone. Well, this is new. She seems cautious, almost like she's nervous about something. 
She gives you a very direct look with this last warning, and you can tell that she knows about your little bit of fan mail. The fact that someone else was contacting you so soon after leaving the crime scene is enough to make her suspicious, perhaps rightfully so. But all the same, it strikes you as a little more than wigglerish. Don't worry, Miss uh, Hecrix. I'm not about to get into the habit of it now. But any potential pockets of useful uncertainty should be examined and exploited before being discarded. And again, the AC kicked back on, so let me know if like, you can't hear me over it, or if it's bad, or anything like that. Because I can turn it off. My AC has a remote control. <laughs> you of all people should be able to appreciate that. I didn't get so far in my career without being open to every possibility. I highly doubt there will be any kind of confrontation. This person seems too content to hide in the shadows, and even if there is just you, and even if there is, just you remember. My winning streak has been going since before you and your betrothed were hatched. Whoops. How do you back up? Shit. Nope, that's not how. Frick, I knew how to do this last time. Anyway, that was some information that you're not gonna get because I clicked through it too fast. Flippy flap. See to it that it doesn't. You're no use to us otherwise. And with that, your superior clicks the end of her pen in a way that lets you know that this meeting is over, as quickly and abruptly as it began. She glides over to the door and leaves without sparing you a second glance. You don't hang around either, but by the time you're back out in the corridor, she's already vanished. It's stuttering a lot? Sorry, I'm actually, like, taking a second to look. Um... Oh. Oh, hey. Oh, yeah, there it is. Cool. Um, yeah, I just, I saw last way I, like, pressed a button and it went back. So is, hmm. Yeah, because it's saying FPS is really low. Um, it's stuttering a lot. I'm trying to figure out what I can do to fix it. I closed Chrome, which is, like, the thing that takes up most of my stuff. Um... Shoot! Here, let me open it up on my end and see if it's stuttering there, too. Not to say your computer is at fault. Maybe your computer is at fault, Abby. Jeez. Um. Oh, there should be a way to view it. Oh, you're pretty far behind? Shoot! There's no real way for you to catch up. Um, cool. I'll just, I don't know. I'll just live with it, I guess. Uh, let me know if it, if anything else weird happens and I'll see what I can do about it. Um, okay, let's get back to it. Your head is full. Something isn't adding up here. And the call you got is the biggest variable. You need some space and time. You walk past the row of cubicles, aware of anxious eyes on you. Sestro is often nervous, fretting, obsessing about one threat or another. He crams so much history into his head, you think maybe he just starts reliving it sometimes, seeing portents of a second renaissance around every corner. It's understandable, though. He's the mask, the public face, the direction everyone's facing while uh, Hamifi does all the dirty work. And the problem with being the mask is you have to look back at them. But seeing Hamifi paranoid? That's rare. And now that you have time to think about it, it strikes you as unsettling. You've watched the two of them go through a lot of moods over the sweeps, settling into their roles and assuming authority. Hamifi took to it more comfortably than her mate sprit, or at least appeared to. You wonder what she knows that you don't. What would lead her to her unusual show of concern? Filtered as it is through a desire to protect the company. 
the open-ended possibilities start to close in on you. You get a constriction in your chest from being surrounded by those you've been told not to trust. You're getting caught up in speculation. Before you know it, you're back in the elevator. Uh, soft music? Muzak? Blurring into a mindless din in your ears. You breathe a sigh of relief when the doors shut without anyone else coming in. You don't have idle conversation in you right now. A very long time ago, you learned a number of exercises to deal with overwhelming feelings from a good friend. Call it an old therapy takeaway. As the elevator takes you up, 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 you make a repetitive little motion with your hands. A ritual of calm. Four fingers on your left hand tap your right palm twice. Then you switch. Fingers on your right hand tapping the left palm. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. It helps you center yourself and focus as you exit the elevator on the top floor and take a single flight of stairs to the roof. The cool air is a deliverance. You walk to the edge of the building and look out on Stronghold 21. Pastel neon lights suffuse the streets. The base of faraway music of the Stronghold's nightlife thumps distantly. Colorful advertisements flicker on LED screens. This week's Skyrim release, a new brand of sugary fix, the 101st season of Who Wants to Be a Hyperlooper. They just straight up reference Skyrim in here. Not even reference, they just straight up said Skyrim. Okay. That show hasn't been the same since a young man lost on it and destroyed the original set before spiraling into a full-blown cult leadership. But that's a story for another time. It's easy to look inside these walls and see what the revelers on the street see. A society without scarcity, a productivity and prosperity, but every bright light casts a shadow. You think of bodies, face down in the snow, bondmates getting an impersonal phone call that will break them, a deep breathing voice taunting you over a voice link. You think of a thousand reasons someone would turn against this world. You think of more why someone outside of it would steal, kill, break, just to tear it down. The breeze gives you a chill. Lines of probability start to firm up in your mind. I forgot to turn my phone on silent. There we go. This world is balanced on a precipice. And somewhere out there, a conspiracy has emerged to steal a piece of its history. One that may push it over the edge. It's up to you. Time to make a plan. Oh, hey, I really wasn't that far from the end. I should have stuck it through. Yeah, that didn't even take me 20 minutes because I was in for like five minutes before I even started. Shit, I should have just stuck it through last time. Oh, well. I wasn't sure how long it would be. Um. Okay, so let's start volume two. as I slam my soda can down. Soda, it's alcohol. By the way, I mentioned it and it tastes okay. Not something I will buy again, even though I accidentally bought two cans worth. Um, okay, volume two of business and busy work. So I don't think I've seen any of this guy over here. And I think I've only seen porn of her. So we'll see. A theft has occurred in the northern wastes. Stolen, a filter of the vivifier's blood, said to have supernatural properties. In charge of the investigation? Yourself. You have your orders, and you have a case to solve. You think that you think you should start close to home. Known quantities. You've got two candidates in mind to interview first. You choose... Oh, hey! Now it's like friend Sim. Before it was just like, there are these people. And now it's like, choose these people. Look at this. This is so cute. He's so happy. And she's very cute. Uh, so ripetite? Ripetite. What? Ripite? Ripite. Ripite? Ripite. I don't know how to say any of these names. 
and Sirage, 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 Sirage. Cool. Um, let's start left to right because that makes sense to me because that's how we read. Uh, Repite Colden. A simple enough start, you feel. You're not one for pulling a metaphorical hamstring and you still have a day before you'll be heading to idolic acres. Can't waste time. It feels good to be hunting for a squeak beast after so long. You really feel your vicious uh, verminator senses shed uh, turquoise tears of joy. Your vicious verminator senses shed turquoise. Sorry, I'm just like, like I read that and it didn't make sense to my brain, so I had to reread it. Oh, good. It didn't make sense to you either. What a confusing portmanteau. You're not quite sure if the latter half of Verminator's wordology is Terminator or Exterminator. Perhaps you could claim it's a Portman trio. You're a nerd. There weren't many particularly interesting details attached to Colden's name, but regardless, you'll pay him a visit. He ties, His ties to Scorp would potentially give him access to deadly secrets. Once you arrive, security is perfectly apathetic and nonchalantly allows you inside once you flash your credentials. You spare half a thought wondering what he thinks you're doing here, but you ignore it in favor of giving, uh, how did I say his name already? Uh, Repite's uh, Trolodex card another glance as you enter the elevator. This is so cool. I'm just learning more things that you can do with uh, Renpy. And now that I have this, I can look through the code and figure it out. As luck would have it, when the doors open a chorus of, to a chorus of keyboards clacking like mechanical chirp bugs, your eyes drift from the card to the man himself. You examine him from across the room. He's so happy! What's going on? He appears to be talking to a co-worker. Judging from the frantic motions of his hands, he's explaining something. Something big. This guy has always been one for animated gestures. Recall, uh, Repite Colden. This isn't the first time you've seen his face, but it's not really much more than the fourth. You never forget a face, but even if you did, his would be off the table. He makes a strong impression, especially in the conference room you first saw him in. He had ideas for Scorp things, a relatively new concept, especially considering you'd first heard of the app a few days prior. His arms... His arms would move about, not unlike a cartoon character. The glow of the projector made his white teeth blinding. His smile almost looked fake from how real it looked. There were themes for each department of the company. You remember rolling your eyes as he started with the accountants. Loyal uh, logarithms or security guards, ostentatious oculars, serious sass, secretary serenade. He'd mention he'd mentioned that any hmm, he'd mention that that one in particular was for the lovely lass at the front desk who evidently had a habit of dueling hearts onto her work papers when uh, when she was bored when you looked to your left you saw that exact secretary face buried in her hands in mild embarrassment not exactly a secret with dire consequences you'd think but also you didn't care perhaps the strongest quality he had is his voice Deep, but not rumbly. Like black honey. It demands attention. Cool, now I'm suddenly really interested in hearing a fan dub of this. You could not further recall moments spent in the ab ablution trap with the patent-pending inspo nuggets intermission of the meeting in your mind's radio, but you try not to layer recalls like that. Perhaps you should do your recollection outside of the timed automatic doors next time. That's fucking hilarious. With a mental sigh, you open the doors again. I'm sorry. Could you imagine someone just standing in the elevator, staring straight ahead, or maybe with their eyes closed, and then the doors just close on them, and then in a second, they just open back up and they walk out. 
Like, especially someone as serious and, like, high-ranking as Cecily? Okay, I'm just losing it over that, that mental image. Exit. You step out of the elevator and into the office. No time for games. You wait for the first sign of a break in his conversation and approach him. You clear your throat and give him a curt nod as he turns towards you with a look of surprise on his face. Every time I read his name, I forget how I pronounce it. Repite Colden. My name is... Oh, God. He just has, like, a deep, honey voice, and I'm voicing him right now. I don't have a deep voice. Um, <clears throat> whoops, didn't see you there. The way he reaches over to shake your hand with both of his catches you off guard. It reminds you uncannily of those old greeting machines used at corporate co convenience... Convenienceries? That would come to life at the press of a button. Creepy bastards. Thank goodness they've started using people in costumes for that instead of robots. You appreciate the personal touch. Guilty as charged. Repite Colden. But it looks like you already knew that. Guess my reputation precedes me. I love him. He's clearly waiting for something. A laugh, you assume? Uh, unfortunately for him, he flops, as the chuckle bunker regulars say. My name is Cicely, Cecily uh, Eorpa, and I'm currently conducting an investigation of grave importance. I'd appreciate any time you have to spare for some questions. You like getting to the point. Oftentimes, the point means the point of your blade, and you can never turn down a chance to dance with blades. If only the chances ever came. Repite's face seems to be somewhat frozen on a smile. He looks confused more than anything. Beyond, uh, being questioned isn't exactly a difficult concept to wrap your head around, in your opinion. You are, wow. You want to talk to me? It's more of a belie believable than me asking this of your colleague over here, the one that I am not presently engaging in conversation. Yes, you. The deal behind him is definitely finding his work very interesting right now. In an instant, his nose is buried in his computer monitor. He's smart, not looking like he's clearly eavesdropping. Still, you'd prefer some place more private. If you have to spend this conversation counting his nervous ticks and fidgets, you'll go mad. Perhaps if we could relocate this somewhere else. I wouldn't wish to disturb anybody's work. I'd hate to make you look bad. Of course, I'm happy to get a move on. It's as I always say, there's a time and place for all of us. Don't you know? You give the worker behind him a curious glance, and his confused expression tells you that he has literally never said that before. Whatever. Your eye has also caught a nameplate next to the door across the office space, and it's a name that was just used in an awful pun by its owner mere seconds ago. Is that your office over there? I'd say that would be a good place. If you wouldn't mind, of course. Not at all, not at all. Come one, come all. It's this way. Why do I get Kronk vibes from him? He's leading you to the clearly labeled room that you pointed out. Your hero. You spend the short trek re-examining the evidence, sifting through your mental documents and familiarizing yourself with the important facts. When he lets you in, you're taken aback from how personalized the room looks. It feels like it could only be his, and you barely even know him. Your mind works fast to find the theme of the miscellaneous junk spread across the room. You see a joke book, a calendar with every day marked, a miniature ray gun model. Arms hoarder? Doesn't seem like the type. That microphone making itself comfortable on the desk catches your eye. He records something, apparently. Repite, uh, Repite seems just as surprised as you are, and he rushes to tidy his desk up. You give a whiteboard you give a whiteboard nearby a glance. Based on the doodled alien heads spouting inspirational slogans, someone's got space on the mind, and there I did accidentally clicking my right button again. Your least favorite is the three-eyed alien telling you to reach for the stars. A little on the nose. 
Sorry, so sorry. I forgot I was having a synapse squall in here. Taking a gander at my design work, we're working on a brand new Scorp theme, Celestial Crossroads. Did you know that in From Repiton to a Moon, the author's rough calculations on the requirements for the cannon able to launch three people into space were remarkably accurate? Fascinating, isn't it? His cannon was still impractical, impractical, but it was quite a commendable attempt. We can talk trivia later. Take a seat, Mr. Colden. You're not sure why you see Repite grabbing for his seat, but you can tell that he's doing his best to try and lighten the mood. Where do you want me to put? Your cold stare pierces through him like a hot knife through buttery cliches. You're not in the market for a lightened mood. The few inches he'd lifted his seat off the floor are reversed, and he lets out a fake cough before sitting down. Cecily, you just love him! Right. Investigation. I'm not really sure what you need from me, but I'm an open book. But first, I have a question for you, Miss Yorpa. For me, you say? I was under the impression that I was questioning you. He nods enthusiastically and doesn't wait for confirmation before he dives right in. You seem quite tired. Have you had enough soda? I've got a spare cushion lying around if you want to take a snooze cruise. Your business can wait, I'm sure. Self-care first. Is he trying to change the subject? I've had a sufficient amount of sustenance, thank you. I'd really like to have the reins of this conversation again, Mr. Colden. He raises his hands a little bashfully, and though he's smiling, there's a slight sorrow to it. Like he knows that was perhaps his last chance for a lighthearted conversation. Right, all yours. My hands are off. I'm nudging them in your direction, and please, call me Repite. May I call you Cecily? No. With the investigation properly underway, you retrieve a folder that might help contextualize the situation slightly. For him, you mean. You've already read this document a significant number of times. Once. Recently, in the Northern Waste, there was an armored truck that was intercepted that was intercepted en route to deliver some particular goods back to corporate. In particular, a valuable package was stolen. You'll spare the details in case he turns out to be a blabbermouth. He doesn't sound like he has much of a filter, even if you, uh, even if you could be wrong. It was an unscheduled transport, so the culprit must have ties to corporate. Would you happen to know anything of this operation, before or after the fact? Is there any... Is there... Is there talk of any Arctic antics in your area of the corporate ladder? The look on Repite's face is one of slight concern, and while you're trying to figure out whether it's genuine worry or just a cover-up, he gives you his response. I can't say I've heard of this, but that certainly sounds kind of dangerous. Is everybody okay? Yes, you almost say in the most disappointed voice you can muster, the armored truck full of priceless assets was intercepted and nothing happened. They had to pay a fee for crossing the bridge, draw straws to see who'd be stuck being the driver, sing an obnoxious repeating song the whole trip home. Three employees died. Two armed guards and the driver. You start to lose faith in the idea that he'll be any help to you because he's getting teary-eyed about three complete and total strangers he didn't know existed until tonight. Golly, those poor souls. They were only doing their jobs, protecting that truck. That poor driver, trying so hard to drive so far. I love him! It didn't even matter in the end, your mind whispers to itself, but you let him grieve for a few more seconds. And that truck, having to endure the harsh cold, I hope its driver loved it and cherished it. I'm about to cry, I love him! Why has no one been talking about him? Or maybe they have, but I haven't been paying attention because I didn't know the context. And that package, it must feel so scared and lost in the hands of who knows who. Are you absolutely sure there's nothing you know about this truck, Mr. Colton? I find it difficult to believe that you have zero ties with this incident. Gosh, I'd love to help. I really, really would. But I don't know what ties I could possibly have. 
I mean, I wear a tie, Is if that's any good. I could maybe toss you one as well if you'd like. I'm positive you'd really pull it off. You're not just unsure if he's the culprit, but you're downright rooting against it. Please, please let there be a better antagonist to chase. You have a way to know for sure, and that method uh, is the rest of this interrogation. There is something I'm looking to tie up, and it's all the loose ends of this case. Yeah, you think. What a badass comeback. Repite looks positively stunned at your sense of professionalism. She's such a nerd! Tell me this. Why do you think I'm here, questioning someone who seems to know nothing about this case? There must be an obvious tie... Connection you have for me to be s spending my time here. You don't want him to talk about ties again, because he looks like he's about to invite you to the company clothes shopping field trip as a bonding exercise. Instead, you give a brisk nod of your head to his whiteboard. Consider, you work for Scorp. It's the only relevant a chat client around. Information is your deal, is it not? Especially with a battleground, of, battleground devoid of competitors. Sure is. After all, if you got information, you've got victory, as the great man once said. That's been my motto for forever. He's looking very confident for a solid three seconds before it all crumbles like a house of cards into the endless void of uncertainty. Or was it, you can't spell victory without information? You can't get information without giving victory. That was it. I'm sure of it. Funny you should me mention giving victory. I've got some questions to ask about how this information may have been leaked. I have reason to believe that you and this entire company could be involved. And if you really want to help me out, you'll answer some questions. Though he looks alarmed, either you've made a crack in the case or, or he's just very paranoid, he doesn't seem to be panicking. Well, I'd be a dummy if I didn't try to clear my company's name, wouldn't I? Please, ask me anything. And you're off. Oh, hey, the bar's up again. I forgot about that. Um... Psh, 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 psh. Question microphone. You want to dial it back a bit. Maybe make sure he doesn't get too overwhelmed. This is only a baseless assumption regardless, but you leave no stone unturned. Sorry, I burped. <laughs> he likely speaks out about things and could easily have blabbed about something. You doubt it's here for show in show alone, considering it takes up a fair amount of limited desk space. Leaning over, you gently tap the base of his microphone and raise an eyebrow. Last I checked, Scorp doesn't come with a radio feature. What's this then? I doubt you have an intercom system rigged up either. Before answering, Repite apparently sees it in, uh, sees it necessary to grab one of his post-it notes and a pen from his jar of writing utensils. What are you doing? Writing down a note to self. Dear Repite, consider a radio theme. You have the means, so make some schemes. Cool. Uh, can I just say again that I love him? You really doubt it was necessary to include that last sentence, but okay. He finishes jotting down the idea you've given him and sticks that on his computer monitor along with other similarly neon-colored notes. Well, this is excellent. Boy, right here is my partner in trying when it... Well, this ex... I was, like, phrasing that all wrong. Well, this excellent boy right here is my partner in trying when it comes to my podcast. I should have made that joke. I was thinking when I saw the microphone, oh, does he do a podcast? And I should have made that joke because now it seems fake. That's news to you. Seems rather counterproductive to mix work and hobbies, doesn't it? Now, I know you may be wondering why I have my setup here at work. Fear not, there is a perfectly reasonable explanation. I want to rope a friend in from work as the as the Weiss's special guest. All I have to do is open the door. Or if I want to rope a friend in from work. Actually, you don't particularly care for what the way he's eyeing you. Like, like he knows exactly how to ensnare you in a friend trap. And my cat just came in front of the monitor, so I have to dump him. Uh, nor the way he presses a button on his mic and clicks something on his computer. He says... Check, check. Uh, 
uh, sorry, check, check, beam me up, check, check. And it sinks in that he's recording. Yippee. The only reason you don't stop him is so you, so that you can get a feel for his narrator style. How casual he is. See if he'd be the type to let secrets slip. Good evening, lady skies, gentle clouds, and every raindrop in between. It's a healthy number of degrees above freezing, and I'm your host, Repite Colden. Cool, that's my new intro. To your surprise, there is a change in demeanor. Yes, he's still smiling far more than anyone else in the room is, but his voice softens somewhat. Oh, my bad. Unfortunately, it gives you pretty much no new information, so you're stuck listening to an episode of Repite Dialogue for now. We've got a real mind tickler that'll leave your imaginations in knots to, to start off. What has four walk limbs in the morning, two in the afternoon, and three on corporate paid vacation? I'll let you stew on that, but as always, I should introduce this Weiss's co-pilot, Cecily. Care to give us a good old autobio? He beckons you closer with a hand and tilts the microphone towards you. All the memories of Seven Sweep Stage Fright come... Seven Sweep Stage Fright come flooding back. Seven Sweep Stage Fright. This isn't the same as your phone calls with your future employers, though. This is a jokester with a microphone. I would suggest that you turn the microphone off before your radio show takes a turn for the uncooperative. I did not agree for this. to do this. We're also not on a first-name basis. Let's get that clear while I'm setting the record straight, Mr. Colton. Thankfully, this doesn't seem to be a live broadcast, since you'd imagine those take a little more setup. You'd hate to embarrass this man in front of an audience. With a nod of understanding, he stops recording, though his keystrokes afterwards concern you. Don't tell me you're actually saving that. Let's just call that a work in progress. Revisit that one some other time. In the meantime, perhaps try saying things with words instead of throwing me into the deep end of the talk show pool. Repite seems happy enough to plug himself, pulling a rolled up poster out of his desk drawer that has a suspiciously similar composition to one of the science fiction flyers strung up on his walls. He explains, it's like he's pitching, he's, he explains it like he's pitching it to an executive, which you find somewhat entertaining. He's just uh, missing the oversized paper that he pulls back to reveal his storyboard and marketing research. Whether or not It's a Good Day is a podcast I run in my off time. It stars me and a new co-pilot every episode where we talk about what else in a, uh, what else in an empty conversation? The weather. We've got a segment for Neato Riddles. We talk about sci-fi, the occasional glad libs, but it's primary weather talk. Primarily weather talk. The answer to that riddle was a troll, by the way. It was a stretch. At least you can add, almost started an audio show to your resume. Ironic, the blade wielder hits the cutting room floor. Press about Scorp. It's the most logical question, considering you're dealing with someone somehow knowing something. Like all crimes committed by people who are awake. Scorp is all about information. You intend to find out how your info was passed to an outside party. Scorp just blew up out of nowhere, didn't it? Hadn't heard a thing before it was suddenly swallowing its predecessor with an unhinged jaw. Rushing headfirst into new things seems to be a theme around Scorp. Pouring time and energy into a broken concept? Classic. Textbook, as a matter of fact. I'd imagine you're quite proud of yourself, being so high up on the corporate ladder. Last I check, it ranks number one on my list of favorite things. Your eyebrows quirk at such a strange notion. You're perfectly capable of keeping up appearances. But number one, that's impressively highly ranked. If there were a collection of high ranks, that would be the highest. There would be no end to the elevation of that one rank. You're quite fortunate. Not everyone can speak so highly of their jobs. Most people would reserve that spot for loved ones or particularly tasty foods. Well, it's tied with my soulmates, too. And my friends. Oh, my glasses, too. Can't forget him. Also, have you seen Space? That's up there, also. Not personally, no. Okay, there are a few ways he could have been involved, being the center of the information highway, or likely being close to people like Sestro. You could approach this a few ways. 
Really, though, you've wasted enough time and you would really like to hurry this up. I'm going to have to ask you to show me your uh, Scorp logs. As someone so closely involved with the inner workings of Scorp, I have to make sure everybody's clean. You understand, don't you? If you're clean, you have nothing to worry about. The fact that he looks visibly worried almost makes you smile. You're absolutely positive he didn't do the actual deed himself, but it's certainly possible he had a hand in this. Sure. All right. What's mine is yours, and what's yours is mine. No secrets between friends. You waste no time in moving behind his desk as he logs back in. At least he isn't putting up a fight, even if you could easily do this yourse yourself by force. You can plainly see his password scribbled on a post-it note stuck to his computer monitor. It's let me in. His Scorp account has a different password, but considering it's 13 characters long, you're willing to bet it's a combination of let me in and Scorp. Yep, that too is on the password note. Alright, here's the old radio station, have at it! You don't bother to take a seat, and you're not going to leave yourself- uh, You're not going to leave yourself that defenseless. You keep a close eye on him as you, in your peripheral vision, like a paranoid vulture. He could jump at any time. He is apparently a big fan of, uh, Siraj Feltry, because her name and image are plastered all over his Scorp thing. There are also many hearts and lovey-dovey photos of the two together. You kindly refrain from telling him that you're close to throwing up in your mouth just a little bit. You did say your soulmates were ranked number one as well, didn't you? I can certainly see that there's some merit to this claim. Commission this little number from the coding department. Those guys are just on the ball, huh? The ball seems to be rolling through sludge because his system lags like it's diseased. You spend a few minutes snooping around his messages. Checking back on your little lead, it doesn't look like he's too concerned. A lot of it is legitimate talk of deadlines and ideas and encouragement. And also him bouncing jokes he clearly got from the internet off of his co-workers. Priority 1. Search his contacts. You don't understand why Scorp doesn't let you see names attached to their troll tags, but you know that Sestro has a very mem memorable shade of purple. After a brief search, you found the heir's troll tag, but... Do you and Sestro have any chat history at all? There is nothing but an unaccepted friend request here. I wish, man, what I wouldn't give to meet and befriend him. I'm sure he gives fantastic handshakes. Can you imagine? I can't not respect a guy with such clear visions. It's alright. I'm sure it just got lost in the mail or something. Wow. You're going to move on and try not to snoop too much into the wrong, terribly depressing things. With a lot of power comes a lot of rationality. That's the saying, right? You keep scrolling through his contacts, but you can't find anybody giving him orders of any kind. At this rate, you guess he couldn't have gotten information from anybody important, because he doesn't know any anyone important. You search, and your search ends at the top of his list, and when you're about to investigate a uh, sagacious mediator, he gets a little antsy. This is Siraj, I take it? The one and only. The best and only Siraj there is and ever should be. With the click of a mouse, you're in. And boy, do you enjoy the smell of suspicion in the evening. Their, la their latest conversation is particularly interesting. Rise and shine, sweetie. It's almost go time. Meet me in the break room to go over the details. Whatever you say, smoochy smoosh. Can't wait to know what you've been dying to tell me. It's a big one, promise. You won't regret this. I love his faces. You don't want... You don't know how to feel about the fact that Repite wasn't the one to say smoochy smoosh. But more importantly... Timestamps date this conversation less than 24 hours before the crime. Anything to say, Mr. Colden? You expect to grill him insistently over the course of the next few hours, but he looks ready to burst already. Okay, okay, you got me, I'll talk. My grublet and I might have been a little late getting back from our breaks recently. I've been giving her... Leaks information? Pep talks. That's your big lead. Repite's cheerleader. 
He's giving you a headache instead of an L and E and A and a D. Yeah, work's been stressing her out, so we meet up in a secret spot and I give her encouragement. But we only do it during work because that's when she needs it most. You slump back in your seat and try to keep your bitter thoughts to yourself. He's a real piece of work despite doing nothing noteworthy at all. Am I in trouble? I'll look the other way. At the notion of being let off the hook, he seems to perk right back up like nothing happened. He's leaving that little episode behind, looks like. Wrap it up. You're wasting your time, you think to yourself. You've gained nothing from this conversation. He's looking to you, silently asking what the problem seems to be. It's not his business, quite frankly. He's giving you a gentle look, like he's trying to sedate a frightened animal. Are you sure you're doing okay? You don't seem in tip-top shape to me. I'm fine. You've only wasted precious time on false hope, after all. Rupai doesn't look convinced. I... I didn't let you down, did I? Oh, that's cool. I bolded and not bolded. I didn't think you'd notice. Ouch. You see him recoil a little, but he manages to fight through it. You appreciate the resilience, but you want to draw attention to the bawling boss in his office. You wouldn't want to draw attention to the bawling boss in his office. Sorry, it's just been a rocky start to a very high-stakes investigation. How old are you, if I may? Twelve. Twelve sweeps. I'll assume you're the same. Oh no, he's a baby! I'm practically twice your age. I wouldn't say I'm qualified to give you advice for management, but I certainly have some life le lessons under my belt. Here's one on the house. The first pawn you move can spell your downfall from the very start. It doesn't matter how you play the rest of the game if you begin poorly. The opening gambit sets the scene. You can't rewind that. All you can do is mend the damage before your throat is slit and you bleed to death in a regretful husk. Not everyone can move ahead so blindly without th thinking like some company is around here. A moment of silence hangs uncomfortably in the air as he tries to figure out what to say. You can see the words buried under his tongue, different ones attempting to escape with no luck. You start to pack your papers and stand up, thoroughly spent from a few hours of learning how much of a goofball a boss can really be. I'll be seeing you. Actually, I'm gonna need you to wait just a second, miss. Excuse you? Oops, accidentally clicked that again. As you turn around to follow him, you see him marching over to the door, sliding his wheelie desk chair right in front of the door under the handle. Hmm. He doesn't even prop the chair up to the doorknob to uh, stop anyone from else from coming in, or to lock the wheels, or anything. You do realize I can easily move that out of the way. I have people to talk to. Or even just sneak past the gap he left he left behind some very light furniture because it's not entirely a snug fit. Not a traditional, uh, I have no idea what that word is, in passant, but practical all the same. At first he doesn't respond, instead wiping all of his creative mind map from his whiteboard. You have you have a puzzle to solve, and I've got two thumbs and also a puzzle to solve. I want to help, Cecily. I know we can work together and come up with an answer for these mysteries. I'm a creative director, and a creative director... I'm a creative director and a creative director. You wanted me to think, and I... I really, really want to do something. I don't know how I'd feel if I let you walk out of here without having done anything. That looks somewhat important. You've written that deadline is in two days. Please tell me you backed that all up somewhere. Nope. That was the only copy that existed, and now it's gone forever. Helping you is more important. I love him. Well, now I've negatively impacted your work schedule. I really should be going. Nonsense. We have a crook to catch. And so he gets to scribbling. Scribbling and scrawling and jotting down words and linking them with wavy lines. Let's just mark the keywords. He's underlying every word he writes. You don't figure he's letting you go until he thinks he's helped you. Oh well, you might as well save the measly two synapses it would take to note this down. He at least remembers everything you told him. 
He's a good listener. All the key notes are present. Unfortunately, he seems to procrastinate not five seconds after you mentally compliment him. What's with all these swirly clouds up top? Not an attempt to recreate the scene of this, of this new crime, I hope. There's a suspicious amount of delight he shows when you ask. Why, you can't have a synapse squall without clouds. What kind of storm would it be without clouds? It's as we say on whether or not it's a good day. Sometimes you need clouds. There isn't much you can count on, but you can always count on clouds being there, you know? Imagine it raining without knowing when or why. You get drenched and give it at least 15 different viruses with no warning whatsoever. Your eyes focus on the board for a moment. You hear Rapite excitedly trying to inspire you, but... None of it sticks. You hear everything he says, but it just brushes past you like wind in the grass. It's a nice sentiment, for sure, but it doesn't give you answers. It's nothing but fluff. Surface level, surface level boon. Eventually, he notices that you're not looking at him and joins you in viewing the facts. The silence is clearly making him uncomfortable, but that might also be his sudden urge to make it up, uh, up to you clawing at his psyche flying at his psyche. Never mind that he's eating into both his time and yours of his own volition. I appreciate the assistance, for the record. You don't have to be doing this. Now I'm just cutting into your work time. You're allowed to let me handle this. I'm qualified, just off to a rocky start. No investigation is simple from start to finish. Not with crimes this drastic. And yet, here you are. You try hard, I'll give you that. Just... Don't leave your employees hanging for too long. Ah, uh, don't worry about my job. They'll be fine. There's a time and place for all of us, don't you know? You're getting a strong wave of deja vu. Recall, Repite's inspirational slogan. This happened to be like half an hour ago, so you don't need to bring this up again. What's next? We're calling every time someone says hello to you? Move on. Repite goes to scribble more possibilities down. You can't see past his body, so you're left waiting in suspense until he pulls away to present his new theories. Frozen to death. No, they weren't frozen to death. It was intentional assassination. The cuts on the bodies prove as much. Plus, they were driving inside a vehicle where it snows considerably less. Hmm. Fooey. The board squeaks as that notion is erased and replaced with another, not ten seconds later. They didn't turn on each other either. Who would have run off with the vial if all three were killed? With another tisk, he's putting a one more idea on the line, and that's just the plot of a mystery novel released four sweeps ago. Yeah, he's talking about the character arc from one of countless Brendan Fraser roles in the film ad adaptations. Is he serious? He looks serious. The plot of that book looks even worse scrawled on a whiteboard, but you decide to bite the bullet and pat him on the head. You know what? I'll let you know if we get a ransom note from a man with many skills from inside corporate. I sincerely promise. Aha! Uh -huh, I knew it! It's always someone from inside the company. Who else would know what was inside the truck? You're the one who said that, but whatever. You bite your tongue as you drag the impromptu blockade he'd set up out of the way. You're eager to find some new leads, and even if it seems anticlimactic, you need some space. Oh, are, are we done? But of course, I have an infiltrator with many skills to catch after all. Thanks for your help. You try in earnest not to sound sarcastic, because then you'll probably be subjected to more randomly generated murder mystery plot twists and hurt feelings. It seems to work because Repite catches and shakes your hand goodbye before you can escape, and tosses you his business card while he's at it. It's good to branch out if you need help. Every branch comes from the same tree, after all. Don't forget, I've got your back. You have no idea what the joke he's clearly, clearly hinting at is. He's winking and grinning and patting himself on the back for some reason. You're thanking him politely, yet sternly confirmed that you're leaving. You breathe out a sigh of relief when you finally step out of his office. You could do with a trip to the monster boiler yourself, 
seeing workers buy uh buy all that energy drink. Seeing workers buy all that energy drink. But it's time for you to clock out. You've learned virtually nothing, but you suppose you have a new phone numbers in your bank. He apparently wrote down his soulmate's numbers on the back of the cart, too. In blue pen, his moral is described as good at puzzles like this. You start wondering whether or not it's worth it to reach out to another detective before the reason his voice has inflected before the reason his voice had inflected strangely earlier dawns on you. I've got your back. You flip the card over to its front again and you shove it carelessly in your pocket. You're moving on to a new suspect. He's so cute though, Cecily! I love him. Okay, that's where I'm gonna end it for now. That was a bit over an hour, so I think that's good. I think I'll keep these at like an hour. Um, so yeah, thank you for coming and watching and like live, Abby. <laughs> and thank you for anyone else who watches this after I upload it here in a few minutes, probably. Um, so yeah, I will be back at some point, sometime to do this again one day. Uh, maybe I will figure out how to add guests on here to voice act with me because I don't know how to do that now. So it's not as fun. But uh, let me know if you know how to do that because I have no idea. Um, but anyway, uh, that'll be it. Please check out my website, Jack's Does Homestuck. I'm just going to plug myself now. Please check out my podcast, Jack's Does Homestuck. Please check out everything, Jack's Does Homestuck. No. Um, because my Twitter isn't Jack Says Homestuck. Technically, there is a Jack Says Homestuck Twitter out there. Actually, I don't know what the Twitter handle is, but my Twitter is SA Dragon Tweets. Um, so check that out. And thank you for watching again, which I've said already. Uh, but yeah, and I will see you guys later.